Okay, guys, welcome. Uh, we are ready to go week one, day two. Today uh, is a day about restoration, a little bit of recovery, flexibility, get us set up for tomorrow. So we are in week one. If you did yesterday in full or even partial, uh, you're probably a little bit sore. That's okay. That's normal. That's a part of the process. We know that in week one, the biggest emphasis for us is to make sure that the core sessions, the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, are done very well recovered and that's going to be our focus so um today and thursday the the more recovery flexibility days i love them you feel great coming out of them and they're going to progress as well so fundamentally what i how i tend to approach these things is or we tend to uh, approach these things is you know you either roll and release then you stretch then you get dynamic and then from a dynamic pattern you load those dynamic patterns we're not going to get into the loading piece right away right now what we want to focus on is just rolling and kind of mashing up the tissue, getting some good static stretches. Yes, some old school static stretching. And then from there, a little bit of core just so we package everything together and then we call it a day. All right, so that's gonna be our sequence. All you need today is a block, a roller, some form of a roller, and a Callaway golf ball, of course. Um, if you don't have one of these things, before you start, think about what you could use to replace this. You don't need a perfect foam roller. You, you can go get a, a PVC pipe, cut it in two feet or one foot even. If you don't have this, you can use a PVC pipe, a shorter one, and use it for a lot of the same work. I don't have a mat, um, but this is how we're going to sequence it here. Um, I'm fine. And a couch. Most houses have a couch. You normally have access to that. That's all good. All right, so we're going to walk through this. First thing we're going to do is 30 seconds, just roll out the feet. Absolutely wonderful feeling. Our foot and ankle complex is very important for what we're going to be doing here, of course. So this is important. If you don't have a golf ball, find something that you can roll and buy a golf ball. It's, it's cheap. It's easy to bring everywhere. And um, it's a useful tool on a regular basis. Okay, so just about 20, 30 seconds. Work through this. Get my timer on. Leave that open. Good. And we're going to do... Both sides, so left and right for everything that we do. Not do one leg, then go up the other. And switch legs. So we're gonna go about 30 seconds here. If you find the spot that's a little bit, whatever you wanna call it, stickier or tender, it's okay to find it and pin it down and just let it release. When you're doing any of these rolling exercises, you're gonna find those windows. The last thing you wanna do is create tension and tense up. It's it's counterproductive to what we're trying to achieve. And always remember that, okay? So, five more seconds. And good. So grab your foam roller. This is the easiest part of the workout. Workouts that you're gonna do, just enjoy it. Um, again, um, it's okay if you wanna have music on, you can watch this, it's gonna be very simple. We're gonna work from the heel all the way up. Hit the side, hit the quads and the hip flexor on both sides. So first thing we're going to do is 30 seconds here. I cross this over to add tension. You don't have to, but I'm going to. I'm going to work my way up the um, basically from the Achilles to the calf. Again, if you find that sticking, like right there, if you find that sticking point, pin it down. If this is too easy for you, you can unload and, and actually lift yourself up and you add more pressure. This is too much, you can put your foot down. Find what works for you, okay? So we're gonna go another 20 seconds or so, make our way up the calf. And work through that range, all the way up basically to the back of the knee, and switch. I don't have a timer, I'm not the greatest with this, but understand we're going 30 seconds for everything that we're rolling okay let's keep my i don't know about you my legs are very heavy from yesterday and that's okay which means we did some work feel great about it we got 48 hours to recover from that session to um tomorrow's session so you know first week there's going to be some growing pains you have to make sure your body's prepped make sure you're eating well and preparing preparing for um, 
our sessions knowing that you have time to improve. Kaizen, right? So don't think you're going to come out and just be flying. You're probably going to be gutted. Focus on your nutrition. Focus on your rest. Focus on everything that you need to do to maximize the three harder sessions. Okay? Now we're going to go hamstring. So you kind of ended here. Let's go to the top part and the leg up. For me, this isn't one of the more tender areas, but you still got to make your way up and, and it's going to be different for everybody. Okay. So I'd like to actually lift myself up, use your hands to help you. You can increase low. You can put this leg down. If it's too much, do whatever you need to do. Two, one, that's around 30. Let's switch it up. Work up the hamstring. Me. Again, about 30 seconds. All right. It's okay if you go 60. Take whatever time you need. Or what you can do is do this two times through. 30 seconds, top to bottom, and then the second time through, uh, it can be one of your best friends. Okay, so we're hitting the hamstring. Probably another 15 seconds or so. One, good. So now we're going to do a glute on an angle. I'm trying to hit here. I like to cross the leg across or really get the glute, work through the range here. If that's too much pressure, you can come down here, but I'm going to be up here, use my foot and my hand to navigate this and really try to relax. If you find a really sticky point that you can't work through, find it and use your breath to really work through whatever you want to call it. We don't want to call it pain, but... Uh, that's basically, you know, what people, a lot of people might consider this if they've not done this type of work before. Three, two, one. Ah, good. Let's switch sides. You will often find one side is much easier than the other part of the process. Ooh. Legs are heavy. Feel good though. Take your time. This is a nice relaxing session. That's all this is meant to be. Good. So now we're going to do the quad and hip flexor. So start at the bottom of the knee or right above the knee and work all the way up. We're going to go about 30 seconds. This is one that tends to be a little bit tender for some people. So feel free to spend a little bit more time on this. So start low, start wherever you want. I don't really, doesn't really matter. This is your process, but this is how I'm doing it. I'm working up and down. Again, if this didn't do much, I'd probably do here, but my quads are uh, a little beaten up from yesterday. See, I'm slowly making my way up the quad, the hip flexor, and I'm straight on. I'm also hitting a little bit of an angle so we get more the lateral side, the outside. Three, two, one, good. Switch sides. And we're going to go. Sorry. Start at the knee. Found a spot here. So what I'm going to do... Take a deep breath and visualize my muscle being butter and it's trying to melt around the roller, really connect the mind and the body. I know it sounds a little bit hippie-ish, but it works so well, especially if you have a tight muscle. So work down that quad, all, or up, pardon me, all the way up to the hip flexor. And then get here, finish kind of on the outside. So in total, that was only about eight minutes. And all we've done is focus on rolling the upper body, connecting with yourself. How do you feel? What's tight? What's not? What's sore? What's not? Good. All right. So now we're going to go into several stretches that are also going to work on what we just released. So release and stretch, okay? I'm at home. First thing we're going to focus on is a half kneeling quad stretch. This 
stays neutral. We're not arching our back. We're not finding range. We're not feeling like we're cranking. We're just trying to open the hip up, okay? So I'm going to keep my foot flat. I'm actually going to drive my foot into the ground a little bit, a little bit of a pelvic tilt. I'm just going to hold. It doesn't need to hurt, right? Straight on here, flat foot, drive the foot down. Just breathe and hold, okay? Another 20, 30 seconds just because I like this stretch. Hold. See, I'm getting a little bit lazy. Focus on a good pelvic position. We'll tail tuck and then switch. The same thing, flat foot, good pelvic position. Between your knee and your head, you want to be a little bit pitched, but straight. You don't want to arch the back. You don't want to fall back. You don't want to round. You want to focus on stretching quad and hip flexor, keeping a neutral pelvis and hold. Beautiful, beautiful stretch. You might sweat. That's okay. That's part of this. Okay. Let's keep moving here. Don't worry. Just checking out the angle. So from here, we're going to do a very similar stretch. If you have this, use it. If you don't, grab a towel. We're going to do the exact same thing, but with the knee up. Again, this might be hard for some of you. You guys might feel like you're arching. Use a lower bench. Prop your leg up more. Understand your body, okay? Here, a little pelvic tilt. I'm able to sit back and get my bum to my heel or close. Where's my heel? But that is aggressive. Don't feel like you have to do that. That's something you can work towards. What I'm focusing on is from my knee to my my, my neck or my shoulder, I'm nice and upright with a little bit of a pitch. So I'm not rounding, I'm not arching, I'm just allowing that stretch to settle in and use my breath. Another 10 seconds or so. Again, I don't know where the time's at. You guys have your clock out and know how you're going to do this. And switch. Good. Now, one thing I want you to think about here is why are we doing this? Sorry, pardon me. Get set up, tilt the, tilt the pelvis between the knee and the head. You're nice aligned. You're not creating tension. You're finding your range. You're challenging it a little bit with your breath, but you're not trying to stress. You're not trying to do a 10 out of 10 stretch where you're trying to rip the muscle. You're doing this in a way that you're getting a stretch, but you're also getting a little bit of recovery, okay? So now what we're doing is just holding another 10, 15 seconds. And what I want you to think about here is today you can see we're focusing on lower body, a lots of rolling, mobility. We're going to get some core to set us up for tomorrow. Tomorrow's uh, a, a jumping day, jumping and sprinting, but tomorrow's main focus is going to be jumping. And then Thursday and Friday we follow it up. Thursday is going to be more upper body mobility, but we're always going to hit everything. And then Friday we're going to do our max strength. So why is this day important? Well, if you go too hard today you go, and then you go really hard tomorrow, that's three hard days where tomorrow is meant to be quality. So that's why this is important. And that's why we always have to remember what are we doing today? What did we do yesterday? What do we need to do tomorrow? You think in three-day chunks that allows you to have more success in the sessions that you do do. So part of me didn't want to get out of frame here. Now we're going to do a calf stretch. Now this isn't the best thing for this. But this is what I'm going to use. We're going to do a straight leg calf stretch and a bent leg calf stretch. Okay, I'm not kind of just trying to be sluggish. I'm trying to get here, get a stretch. And again, use my breath. See, if I wasn't talking, what I would be doing is using my breath to go about four to five breaths uh, that take about six seconds, three and three or whatever it would be. And I would use that as my tempo to know how long I have to hold the stretch. And you can hold it longer. Again, this is just where we're going with it. But use your breath to transition now from a straight leg to a bent leg. 
where this one's not going to feel as tough, that's okay. You just got a bit, of, bit of a bent leg and a bit of a stretch. It's okay to have this opposite leg down. That's part of it. Another way to do the bent leg is to actually have the heel down. That's almost a better stretch, to be honest. You can do both. But with the bent leg, I'd rather you have the heel down and the toe elevated and just shoot that forward. Okay. Do whichever you feel most comfortable with. Then again here, let it hang. Straight leg. Again, you don't want to feel like you're sluggish. You're still controlling it. You're breathing. And then for the sake of this, I'm going to drop the heel in a better position and just bend the knee and feel a bit of a bent knee calf stretch, okay? If you don't have this, you can also prop it up against the wall, but we're here, we're doing this, so let's work through it. Good. All right. So we've done quad hip flexor stretch, calf stretch. Let's move on to our next three or four exercises where we are going to, my background as well as basketball and all the other sports is hockey. So I call this a goalie stretch. You can call it what you want. You don't need this. I actually won't use it, but if, if your knees are tender, you can get here. But I want you to use your hands to to either add load or remove load. So the less you use your hands, the more challenging it is, but you can also use your hands to push into the position, okay? So I'm gonna start flat foot, heel down, and I'm gonna sit back, okay? And I'm gonna hold that for about 15, 20 seconds, okay? And if you really like this stretch, hold it for 30, but what I wanna do is halfway through the stretch, hold, and just bring the toe up to the ceiling. Beautiful, beautiful feeling. Again, if you want to, you can do 30 and 30. This is more of a stretch, and I'm using my hands right now to push myself a little bit lower. If you can't do that, you can prop up here, find your range, find what works for you. And you can even come here and turn over. But I like doing both just because it's a wonderful stretch. Again, flat foot, sit back. If you may find one side much tighter than the other, that's normal. And sit back. And open up. Good. All right, so we just hit the groin. Let's hit the external rotators, the glutes, and then come back through. So now what we're gonna do, go to push-up position, drive the leg up, thread the needle, pigeon, whatever you wanna call it. I'm trying to get my shin perpendicular to my chest. A lot of people won't be able to. I can only get here with one leg, and I know that, but I'm still gonna try my best, and I'm gonna push into it and sit back. If I can get here, great. If you can't, prop yourself up however you need to. Love this stretch, sit into it, find it, and take a deep breath. Again, about 30 seconds. Beautiful stretch. All right, switch legs again. I drive up. You'll see this leg's a little bit harder for me. I'll wedge it in, but I'm going to try to find as much range as I can. Just work with me here. Three seconds in, three seconds out. Go for five, okay? So
All right, I'm feeling a little buttery. This is good. So I call this, this is another goalie stretch. You can call it goalie stretch, groin stretch, doesn't really matter. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my knees out wide, and I'm going to try to bring my feet together, and I'm going to try to sit, not create too much tension. I'm going to use my hands to help me find that range. But again, use my hands to my advantage or to make it more challenging. You can use your hands to help you. You can also use your hands to push yourself into that stretch. Find it. And just hold. And again, three to four, or sorry, four to five breaths that are about five to six seconds long. We're going around 30 seconds each. So. You'll often find with your breath, you're slowly going to find more and more range. That's perfect. Beautiful. Now we're going to do two more drills. Sorry, three more drills. Do some core work and then do one more thing to just help us really come down. So here's our only really primary upper body one. We'll do a cat and cow um, off of a bench, off of a, a Couch, biggest thing, elbows in tight. We're trying to move through this area, our T-spine, okay? So don't get the elbows out wide. Elbows are in tight. Hands stay on your head and your neck stays relaxed. You don't get here. And just drive into the elbows and try to bring your chest to the ground. At no point do you lose ten uh, contact with your head. Roll out. Sit back. So we're not holding, but we're going slowly controlling, trying to find a bit more range each time. Do around 10, 10 to 12 here. Oh, that's absolutely beautiful. So second to last one. What we're gonna do here, knees are bent. Put something behind your head if you need to. Cross the leg over if you need to. Just make sure you're in a comfortable position. All right, cross the leg over. Keep your hands out wide. Put pressure if you need to. Sit, try to keep your shoulders down. If you can't get here, just get where you can. Get here, big deep breath in, big deep breath out. Let that sit. Okay, you can either hold it for 30 or you can come back and do five or six with a hold. Keep your shoulders down. Good, and switch. The elbows or shoulders down, use your breath. Again, you can hold this and just let it sit. Or you can move a little bit with some holds. I don't really care. And last one. All right, beautiful. So now we're going to do a reverse Nordic, but we're doing it more for the purpose of mobility, less about truly eccentrically loading. Okay. Um, if you can't sit like this, you can use, um, bring your feet up. You can put something on your knees. I'm just going to demonstrate how I'd like to do it. Okay. So what I want to do is sit up, not be arch, even though, you know, I want to be there. Tilt and try to drive my feet down. Core set, use my breath, and without arching my back, I'm just going to try to find a little bit of range. Okay, this is me, but I've been working on this for a little bit. Okay, 
you might just get here. That's okay. What I don't want is you to get here, start cranking your back. So we're just getting a little bit dynamic. Again, push into your feet, maintain your pelvic position. Two, three, four, one more, and five, good. So last three things, very, more often than not, even if it's a recovery session, we wanna get a little bit of core in. Everything starts from the core, everything starts from the center out, okay? So it's not core abs, whatever you wanna call it. This is more about just pulling everything in after we've done some mobility, some flexibility, stretching, whatever you wanna call it. So as we're doing any core work, Unless we're doing it for the purpose of taking contact, in football, hockey, even basketball, use your breath. Okay, so what you're gonna do is make sure you're breathing through every rep. You're gonna create a good pelvic position. Bring this leg up and get your elbow there. Okay, I want you to try to put a lot of tension in this, but not brace. Okay, this hand's gonna come up. If you need help, you can put it out here. But you're gonna get set up here. You're gonna roll. We call this a cycle roller. You have to roll as one unit, not this, where your lower body moves separate. You wanna think of moving as one unit, as if you were chicken on the rotisserie. Everything moves together, all right? So here, core set, drive. At no point do you wanna lose tension in this block. Two. Everything moves together. You see that the, the straight leg is moving as one unit and I'm moving from the core. I'm not getting here. I'm not getting here and leave, letting this leg hang. Everything's coming together. Okay? You're going to try to get to 10. If you can't get to 10, we'll get there eventually. Okay? We'll do both sides. Everything moves together. the breath through every rep beautiful so for today I'm gonna go through one set if you're feeling like you want to get a little bit more do two that's okay we're gonna build that up but we did that now we're gonna do a, uh, a plank transition so now very similar to the rotisserie concept you're gonna go from a side plank to a front plank to a side plank as slow as you can, five a side. What a lot of people will do here is they'll come here and they'll try to start with their hips or start with their shoulders. That's not the purpose. The purpose is to move as one unit at the same tempo throughout. That's one. Okay, go for five. First couple times you're doing this, may not feel the best or may feel very challenging okay if it hurts to do it barefoot keep your feet flat and don't stack them that's okay makes it a bit easier but i'm gonna keep moving them i think that's four i don't know Good. I urge you to do more if you can, but for today, for this first week, let's not complicate things, okay? So, last drill we're gonna do is a V sit, okay? And is a V sit. And all I want you to do is find a wall. I don't mind if you go legs straight up, but what we're gonna do is get here. I'm gonna go straight, you can go wide, straight up, you can do both, I don't really care. Point is, is your legs are up. Get something behind your head if you want to. Hands are in your chest. And I want you to set a timer, four minute timer, I'm gonna set it and get through this, okay? 
try to. And the whole goal is doing box breathing and helping everything center and prepare us for recovery, okay? So I'm not giving that a good explanation. Let's just get through this. Four seconds in, four seconds out. Four seconds, sorry, four seconds in, hold, four seconds. Four seconds out, hold, four seconds. So it's four, 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 four like a box, okay? I'll do a minute here, then I want you to finish by yourself. You know what we're doing, so. <laughs> Cut that out, so what I wanna make sure we do there is four seconds all, all through the nose. Start. Try your best to breathe into your belly. You see my shoulders rise a little bit, not trying to breathe through here, trying to open up the belly, pull the diaphragm down, really, really focus on breathing through here, not through your traps. So All right, guys, can't lie to you, lost track of time, but hopefully that was four minutes. If not, finish your four minutes. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you tomorrow for week one, day three of our program. Let's get it.